there was something I wanted to mention. Oh, um, who has heard of, of Edith Stein? I've heard of her. Okay. Uh, what do you, do you know anything like about her life or her other name, you know? St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross. Yes. And she is a writer. And a philosopher, just yep. like your girl. Uh, yep, Alice von Hildebrand. Yes. I haven't read anything that she's written, but she is on my list. Oh, girl. I'd she love to hear be some up more. on the list. <laughs> There is, and I just like want to recommend this to anyone listening. Uh, this really changed my life. And it did, there are two books, speaking of books, that changed my life um, as, as a woman. Um, embracing like the body that God gave me naturally, not fighting <laughs> the, the pains and the struggles that it is to be a woman, but knowing that it leads to so much beauty um, and uh, things that I can do with my body that that men can't, and, and that's not a comparison, but it's an invitation for me to live boldly um, and faithfully like to myself as God made me. Um, so the first um, is the theology of the body for beginners, which I brought with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, just as we're speaking, I, I think um, a lot of what we shared today um, revolves around this. And this quote changed my life for sure. Um, this is from the Theology of the Body for Beginners <laughs> by uh, Christopher West. So it's kind of like the uh, the 101 version of, of like a really beautiful teaching from St. Pope John Paul II. Um, but this line, uh, I think, encapsulates a lot of what we're talking about. It says, the battle for man, or in this case, woman's soul, is fought over the truth of her body. So the battle for a woman's soul is fought over the truth of her body. I think a lot of the lies, you know, that like I've been told not by any person, but by a lot of sitcoms, by a lot of comments like, you know, just wait <laughs> um, by a lot of, um, you know, classes in college that just frame things in a very political way in one direction and doesn't leave space for um, for there to be more of a, a Christocentric uh, worldview. Um, yeah, I know for sure that like my soul would be lost if the truth of my body, I didn't eventually come into alignment with. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems like you guys are relating to that just with what you're sharing. So I, I just wanted to make sure that at some point we, um, we mentioned that, that this, uh, this teaching is so beautiful. I came upon it actually after a bad relationship in college where it came to my attention that um, the man that I was dating for a while was um, like struggling with pornography. And that really um, changed my view about myself more than I I thought it would or realized. Um, I think it made me feel very replaceable, like very like insert woman here, (laughs) you know what I mean? Which was so uh, diminishing. Um, But when I realized like, okay, that's not true. And there's so much more beauty and, um, there's, uh, there's so much more dignity that I, um, I deserve. It changed the way, like a lot of things happened for me. And I think that was like a turning point and the theology, the body reading about that was so, so good. Cause the language is different than anything that we hear. It talks about, um, there's like two vis- visible examples One of them is like that um, all of our ideas about like men and women and relationships kind of as the world presents them, it's almost like we don't even know what we're missing because we've never seen the ideal, you know? So it's like um, the Apple logo, you know, how it has a bite out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of ironic that it's like represents um, fallen humanity with with Adam and Eve, which is what kind of got us here. Um, but it's like, imagine if you never saw an apple whole, you only saw it with a piece bitten out. You would kind of think, okay, that's what apple is, is like a, a piece bitten out of the apple. Or if you only drove around ever on a car with flat tires, you would never know what it's like to like ride the cruise because you'd always be struggling and feeling that turbulence when it's really not meant to be there. But if you don't have any basis of comparison, you just kind of figure that that's what it ought to be when it's not. Mm -hmm. So I think um, the combination of dating this person, having these thoughts about myself and coming to realize that's not true. Mm -hmm. And then reading this, it kind of all happened at the same time and turned me in a different direction, which I'm very grateful for. Um, And then the second person who changed my life for sure as a woman was Edith Stein. And she has a beautiful compilation of essays on women women in the world, like women's vocation, how it's different than men, women's education. Um, 
And she's a beautiful, dynamic Catholic woman who actually was born Jewish, and then she became atheist, decided to stop praying, and then she became uh, agnostic, and then she became Catholic, and then she became a nun, and then she was a martyr in Auschwitz. Her story is absolutely amazing. It's beautiful. But all in the midst of that, she was a real intellectual and a a German philosopher during World War II, Mm -hmm. which just shows that she wasn't like, she didn't have any silly notions of like, whatever the stereotype is of women just staying home and um, cleaning the kitchen or something. She was doing the feminist thing, but in an authentic way. Right. Um, So I just wanted to get my shtick in about those things because I just think any person who puts the time in to to dig a little deeper as a woman into sources, like resources like that, your mind is going to be blown. And it's, uh, it's, it's so beautiful and good. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with the theology of the body, I haven't read the Christopher West version, but I did read, um, men, women, and the mystery of love, oh. by Edward tree. Yeah. And that was like a good little version of it. Um, and they talked a decent amount about modesty in mm, there. Girl. Yes. Um, <laughs> and that is a word that has always made it's like me. A, it's like a curse yes, word. Of, yeah. I is. have rolled my eyes for years at that word. And I feel like. I did not come around to it until, honestly, probably in like the last year. I'm not going to lie. Like I hated the word modesty. Why? Um, Can you say why? What did it, what there's did it just like, such a negative you? connotation to it, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am very girly. I love makeup and I love clothes. Um, and it, it always just felt like, oh, you're not allowed to be beautiful. That was like the way that like I... When somebody said modesty, that's what I was hearing in my mm. head. Um, and I feel like once Sean and I like got engaged and got married and we, we were in that period of life, um, I think I had a mindset shift with it. Um, and I don't, I feel like I still don't like the word modesty because of the negative connotation it has to it. Um, but I feel like modesty can be um, a synonym for femininity, and I love that word. Um, so once Sean and I started working towards like marriage and everything, I felt this like strong desire in me to just not like flaunt my body to the world because like I'm going to be a married woman and like God created this body, like I need to respect it um, for myself, for God, for my husband. Um, yeah, I don't know. That was just something I, lo- I wanted to bring up. I love, love that you did because yeah. that was something I hoped would come up. And yeah. I'm so glad that you were inspired to do that. Yeah, even like um, tonight as I was getting dressed for this, like I have this outfit on and like, you know, it's jeans and a top that like it's not a turtleneck by any means, but like it covers like my whole chest. And like I never would have worn an outfit like this in high school if I, you know, if my mom bought me an outfit like this with like the sleeves down here and like the neck up mm-hmm. here, I would have rolled my eyes and been like, that like that's an outfit for nerds. Like I'm not gonna dress like that. Um, well, I think you look fancy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and even when Sean and I started dating, I'm gonna blow up his spot. It was within like the first like two months. Um, I was wearing shorts. And they, you know, they were short shorts and he called me out and he was like, those shorts are a little short, don't you think? And I got so mad at him. And I was like, how, like, how dare you? I'm allowed to wear whatever I want. And now looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, who, like, who was I, you know? But that's what the world tells us. They tell us like, you know, if you got it, flaunt it. Right. Yeah. Well, so, uh, (laughs) how, (laughs) when your boyfriend tells you those shorts are a little short, Mm -hmm. don't you think you should wear a lot? Like, I think most women would react the way you did. Yeah. So what grew in you or changed in you to, to realize like that was actually coming from a place of love. Mm-hmm. Um, what can you share what that difference is now that, that you didn't have then? Yeah. I mean, honestly, like just like being married and like, I don't know, maybe it's because like Sean and I, we waited until marriage to have sex and like learning that like that's something that is designed for marriage. And, um, you know, I don't want to show my body in this way to anyone else because I have a husband now and, you know, I just, I'm not going to 
wear shorts that are like right underneath my butt cheeks anymore. And because does that come from, from, a, um, from a place of being like suppressed or does that come from a place of love? It comes from a place of love. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And it's not like I, I don't feel like Sean is like, oh, this is how you should dress. He's never, that's the only time he's ever said anything like that to me. And I, maybe I scared him a little bit when I like snapped back at him. Um, but no, now it's coming from a place of like, I am a woman. This is the way that God designed me. I should honor my husband. I should honor God with the way I dress. I can look beautiful um, and not have to wear like a paper bag over my body. But like there is a way that I can, can dress that is equal parts beautiful and honorable. Mm. Recently, I was uh, talking to a cousin of mine who's not religious at all. He's um He's, I think he's agnostic. That's how he, and he's, he's like a philosophy major, very deep thinker, very smart, um, but doesn't have any foundation in religion. So it's interesting talking to him because he's, um, got a lot of deep, beautiful, um, ways of, of explaining mysteries in life. Um, and I was talking to him about modesty actually. And I, I think just in passing, I mentioned something about saving marriage for my husband and I didn't even think about it because I talk about that so much like in ministry. Right. And uh, but to him, that must have sounded very coarse. And um, he lives with his girlfriend and they whatever um, uh, don't make the same choices that I do. And I love them dearly and they're just in a different place. Um, but it didn't, it didn't occur to me that how different that would sound to his ears. And he called me on it and was like, yeah. well, that seems a little, um, like why I forget what he said, but he postured it towards the man in the relationship when really I was saying it for me. I was saying, I feel like this, this is some, the, the most dignified thing I can do for myself is to put myself in a place where the expectation is that you get all of me when you've given all of yourself to me with your finances, with your, um, your vows, your fertility, your, um, your commitment, um, that is the, the safest, most honorable way that I can treat myself is to, um, reciprocate when that's been given to me. Um, so on the one side, that's how I see it. And on the other side, it's also very much a gift that I'm, that I am cher- a cherished gift that I will give to the man who deserves that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something, um, like that I, I, it was interesting that he was like almost offended, which uh, like, I don't know. I just was, it was so interesting the way he kind of like stood back and was like, well, that seems, that's a little weird that you would, you know, wait for a man to do that. Yeah. I feel like people take it personally sometimes. Cause I've said it to people while we were engaged and like right. the people who, you know, I'm not like super close with, and we're also waiting until marriage. They'd be like, like why, like, why are you going to do that? Like, don't you want to like test the car before you take it out for a drive sort of thing? And I was like, no, actually, like I don't. So yeah, I don't know. There are a lot of people who I feel like take it to heart, maybe because they themselves have had sex before or they're struggling with some type of like sexual sin or they're like, maybe there's just something personal that like triggers something in them to feel defensive about it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like we, Lawrence and I lived together before marriage. So yeah, we were doing what all of that entails. So we did not save ourselves before marriage with each other, but at the, at the same time, like now the experience of like, you have the experience of not waiting before, Mm -hmm. before you're married and me not. So it's now again, I guess, like I said before, like the kids changing things again, I feel like this is one of those situations where it's like, yeah, I, I made a mistake, I guess, or something that we wish we could have changed, like not living together before marriage. And it's like now like kind of what example I want to give to my children, especially when I didn't do that. And like how you kind of touch on that subject. And I guess, um, the one podcast we listened to a few times together, like I said, I'm not a, a book reader and things like that, but it was Pints of the Quinas and, yeah, and, um, with Matt Frad, it was Matt Frad and his wife on, and they were yeah. talking about the, the, the topic of sex and all that and how they kind of address it within their family with their kids who are now like of the age of like, hmm. where you learn about that stuff. Like, obviously we still have young kids, but 
it got me thinking to how like I would eventually want to address that topic. And, and obviously I've never read the theology of the body or any of the books, but it's one that I'd like to get to because there's mm-hmm. definitely not just about loving mm-hmm. your the body that God had has made, made you and, and respecting it and giving it, like you said to the person as a gift, like you're giving all of you as a gift and just respecting your body and like that. So how they on this podcast, they were talking about um, that in their house, they don't talk of like sex as like, I guess how in school and they're like, Oh, sex is bad. Like if you right. have sex, yeah. you'll get pregnant and that's horrible. And if you, and if you have sex, then you're, <laughs> you're going to get STDs, STDs and that's horrible. And, that's horrible. Yeah. and like just that sex is horrible. But then at the same time, the culture is like, exploiting it like your bodies like female bodies are an object and that's just what you do and like you, yeah. you have sex because you can because it's and, a way of empowering it's empowering yourself yeah, to exactly. men and, and you can and all that manipulate and it's so them. backwards <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah it's so backwards so then in their house they say they, they talk about it like sex is, is beautiful yes it's beautiful yeah. and it, Rather than this negative connota- connotation about it being, oh, it's bad, bad, bad. And it's, it's like, so no. beautiful. Yes, it's right. so beautiful, right? That, and that brings you to the next step that you should then save it and be giving yourself to the person you love most, the person that you want, want to marry or that mm-hmm. you're going to marry, like, after you're married. Like, like bringing all that in, like, tying it all in. Like, no, sex is is a beautiful thing. It's a union. And it's what God calls for like after marriage and what we should be doing. And, and, and it's an expression of your vows, which is what the it's, it's why it's so sacred and beautiful because it's completing what you said in church earlier that day or whenever. Right. So it's, it's actually not a valid sacrament of marriage until that happens because it's part of your vow. Right. And so uh, the theology, the body talks about, um, there being a sacramentality to our bodies mm-hmm. that everything that we know of God or see of God is made visible through our bodies. So the way that we love other people um, is is only in a physical sense. We can say, I love you, but we show you that with the things that we do with our body. And it's like every other sacrament, it's an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. So it's like, it's a it's an outward thing that shows an inward thing. It's It's an invisible thing being shown outwardly. So when we have sex outside of marriage, it's making a vow that we didn't make. So it's kind of like lying with our bodies. And so when we don't think about it like that, it's easy to get that mixed up, right? If we don't have God at the center, it's easy to do a lot of things without understanding why it hurts us. Um, But I love to frame it in a positive light and say it's such a good thing that it deserves this place of honor. Um, So that's really beautiful. So one of the ways that I um, have learned to to value the the virtues of modesty and chastity um, are through the example of, like you were saying, something very valuable, like to value and treasure your body. And so like buried treasure, why do we bury it? Because it's, it's like very expensive. It's very valuable. It's costly. It's um, it's good. So you don't want the world to find it and spend it frivolously Um, and anything that's expensive. So sometimes I'll talk to my students and I'll say, Um, who has an iPhone? And a lot of them raise their hand. Okay. Would you leave your iPhone just laying around anywhere for anyone to break into? No, of course not. It has all my personal stuff. Okay. So how many of you have a, have a car? My mom has a car. Does she leave her car keys just anywhere so that anyone can use her car? No, of course not. Why? Because it's expensive. It would be a lot to replace it. Do you own, does your family have a house? Yes. Are there keys to your house? Yes. Do we leave them anywhere? No, of course not. And then I say, what's the most expensive thing that you own? And they'll name what the things are. And I'll say, are you more valuable than that? And they say, of course, I'm, I'm a person. And we, we give ourselves away like we're worth less than our iPhone, like we're worth less than our car keys. Mm -hmm. Um, So what it shows is that there's a lack of understanding of like our dignity. And I think that's what what, like the root cause is um, for some of those things. And that's why even like in the pleasure of the moment that when that goes away, there's a sense of emptiness and hollowness. And um, when, whenever we sin, we just know it's not in right order. Like it's not in accord with, with who we are. So I think that's actually a beautiful, like alarm system. It's kind of like a smoke detector, like our conscience, right? When the batteries are in there and everything's working properly, when smoke is in there, 
we are like, boop, boop, boop. Okay. We're in danger. So like when we have that sense of consciousness, like when we form our conscience as well, when it comes to these things, we're going to be able to get in a situation where we're like, okay, this could lead to danger. So maybe I won't go there. Um, but if our consciences aren't tuned, it's like having a smoke detector with no batteries in it. And sometimes we go too far and we just like, we're like, gosh, I'm in so much pain the next day, but I don't know why. Mm -hmm. So I think like having these conversations is so important. Um, because so many people just don't know how valuable they are. Maybe they've never been told, or maybe they don't believe it. And, um, I think we're so blessed that we've had, um, we, we've had that being, um, told to us and we've had that shown to us by the people that love us. Mm -hmm. So, um, maybe could we all say something to maybe someone out there that's made choices with their body that maybe they have come to regret, or maybe they would like to change those things. And maybe they don't know how, um, or maybe they feel they're too far gone. I've already mm -hmm. given everything away. And like, how could I make this beautiful again for my future? You know, just, um, what would you say to, to a woman like that? Yeah. So, I mean, speaking from like personal experience, I've been on like both sides of it where, you know, with my husband, we did wait until marriage, but there were relationships I was in where that wasn't the case. Um, so I've been on both sides of it and like, I've felt the shame, but I've also felt like the holiness of waiting for marriage. Um, and it's worth it. And you're just, you're never too far gone and you should definitely go to confession. Um, for me, I didn't go to confession for probably like, I want to say it was like four or five years. It was a long period of time. Um, I was petrified to go because I just had like so much sin, um, piled up, but I went and it was scary, but I felt good after. And then I went again and it wasn't as scary. And then I went again and it was a lot less scary. Um, and it just, it helps and you receive like so much grace through that. And maybe, you know, you'll mess up again after that confession and then you go back and you keep working on it and nobody's perfect. And just because, you know, there are people who wait for marriage, like with their husband um, or wife, whatever it is, that doesn't mean that like they haven't sinned in the past and they're perfect and better than you. Um, we're all sinners and we all go through things and, you know, whatever the, whatever you're saying to that priest in the confessional, like he's definitely heard it before. You're not, right. you're not special. Sin is None not of us creative. Are special. Everyone sins yeah. the same ways. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, you're never too far gone. Hmm. Right. Um, yeah. And to kind of piggyback on that, never being never too far gone. What I would say to someone um, who might have either sinned with their bodies or have done something in their life that is so regrettable and they're, they have this, deep like guilt and almost hatred for themselves it's like mm -hmm. I feel like some people when they make these mistakes they feel as if then they have to believe what they did was right almost for their own sanity to justify it yes, yeah to justify it mm. so then they almost have to play on that side like well no I sex before marriage is is necessary because a b and c and it's because maybe you're living that and that's what you're doing so then you feel the need to justify it by saying, so it's okay, you know? So like what I would say is like, you, you can, you can grow and have a mind shift. Like you could change your viewpoint and then we, we all have room to grow and, and obviously like bringing Christ into your life obviously is one of those things that is mo most helpful. And uh, like you said, going to confession, obviously if you get to that, point but like just being open to the mind shift I would say first that like you're you're allowed to have made mistakes and have done things horrible things whatever it might have been and then not feel like you have to then agree with it because you've done it like you, you could say no that was wrong I'm sorry and bring it up to God and he loves you you have a God that loves you and forgives you always and and you will feel lighter because of it going especially like bringing it to a priest and like you said, there's not, there's nothing he, they haven't heard. It's nothing too God bad knows. that yeah. you can bring, bring to them. So you, you will, you'll feel lighter, you'll feel better. And then you, you could change. You, it's okay. Like you could grow and change. It's, mm. it's okay to do that. You know, what gives me a lot of, a lot of peace is, um, the fact that, um, I think the saying goes every, uh, for, like everyone can be a saint because every saint was a sinner mm -hmm. aside from Mary. Right. Um, ev like Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. 
one of the best saints, right? Um, Jesus chose her, particularly St. Paul was a, was a murderer. He murdered, uh, the first martyr, St. Stephen. Um, there were so many saints who did worse things than you. Trust me. It's like, no matter what, what worse things than me. And that's not to mitigate what I've done. It's just to say, you know what? God's grace is so much bigger. I'm going to just get over myself and move on with my life because these people, um, show me that I can. And I love that heaven is filled with people who glorify God, who were all imperfect. Um, many of them sin the same ways that I did. And, uh, the thing that makes them saints is that they change their minds. Um, they, um, yeah. And I, I really think it's a tactic of Satan and not of God to keep us in our shame, um, because it keeps us wallowing where we are, but God is, um, he's can, when he convicts us, it's like making us feel uncomfortable with that decision to a place where we can change it. It's kind of like, let's take it outside of something sexual and just be like, all right, my pants aren't fitting. I'm like getting a little chubby here. I, <laughs> this is my reminder. Like I need to start eating healthy and getting in shape. Um, like when the button doesn't close, it's like, all right, that's the wake up call I needed. But like, I'm not just going to be like, all right, I guess I'm letting myself go for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like we don't do that with anything else. Right. Yeah. But for some reason with our bodies, with our sexuality, with our, like our sexual identity and virtue, we kind of just, we like give up on ourselves and, and that's on, un, that's unnecessary. So I love, I love, uh, like the overall message here that it's like, it's totally doable. We can, we can all do that. And I think we also need to like support each other. So if we, if there could be a sense of vulnerability, like in this conversation with our, our friends, um, who can say like, listen, this is something I really struggle with. I'm struggling with pornography. I'm struggling in relationships with kind of just giving myself very freely. Um, this is how I, you know, how I've dated. I don't know how to date other ways. Um, there are so many people out there and so many, this is another thing, the chastity project.com. Mm -hmm. with uh jason and Kristalina everett that changed my life when i was in college they have a good podcast too oh it's they called do? lust is boring Ooh, yeah love it's good. That. <laughs> um and uh there are just so many resources we've ma named a lot of them but you are so not alone like there are so many people who whose entire ministries matt frad who runs um pints with aquinas he also has a sign uh, uh like Oh gosh, what is it called? It's a ministry just for to help people um, recover from porn addiction. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Like the church has everything. Yeah, <laughs> like you said, sin is boring. There's mm -hmm. nothing. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun, as Scripture says. So um, there's just so many beautiful ways to restore your life. So I think that's like the takeaway. Definitely. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So maybe just as like one final. Uh, one final thing. Do we all want to say um, one thing we love about being a woman that maybe um, our faith has gifted us with like a certain perspective or some certain thing that we're really proud of or that we love about our bodies or about the gift of, of womanhood that we can maybe wrap up with on like a nice high note? Yeah. Um, I know we didn't really talk about the feminine genius in this episode, mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, one thing that I'll say that I love about being a woman that comes from that um, is my sensitivity. And I feel like that was always something that I wanted to change about myself, that like I'm like an overly sensitive person and I get like very emotional about things. Um, but as I've like grown in my womanhood, I feel like I've been able to like tap into that sensitivity and be there for other people and be like a shoulder to cry on or like an ear to listen. Um and yeah, just like being able to like be that person for other people because like I am sensitive and I understand and I'm empathetic. Um, and I think that that's a gift that a lot of women have. Like women are stereotyped as like, oh, like you're so sensitive, but that's not a bad thing. Mm. Yeah. Um, I guess just what I love being about a woman. Um, I don't know, just, it's funny, I'm, I've never ever labeled myself as someone feminist or fe what, anything like that, but just, I don't know, being, being vulnerable, I guess, more so recently too, just like being more open to your experiences because there's so many people out there going through the same thing, if not worse, that just need to kind of hear that they're, they're not alone in it. And then also just those people like, kind of feeling like they're trapped because of the culture and what it's telling you and things like that. It's just about 
I'm just proud as a woman to have a strong husband. And that's also, mm. I guess, what I can value as well. Like the difference between a man and a woman holding very dear and that to wait, like not to, I feel like culture tells people and women that you have to get married and have kids at such a young age. And then it also puts that added pressure to women and then some tend to settle. And I guess like mm. adding to the, to, I guess what I love about being a woman, but just also kind of giving one more piece of advice is just, is waiting for that right person. Like don't give in to the culture of, of telling you what you have to do and when you should do it, but waiting for that right person, because I said this a million times to people that are struggling with finding that person they want to marry. And I say it all the time. I'm like, I would have waited till I was 50 years old to find Lorenz. Like if it meant 40 amazing years with him, like whatever that number was, I would have waited for him every time. (laughs) So it's like to those people, it's just like, wait, wait for that person because whatever age it is, doesn't matter. Like they're like out there and it's worth, worth that wait, you know, they're worth it and you're worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I think the thing that's coming to my heart as you guys are sharing is I love being a woman because of our strength. Mm -hmm. And I think we are strong because we suffer. There's a lot of physical suffering involved with being a woman, um, in a lot of ways. So I think the reason we're sensitive is because we, we endure a lot Definitely. Um, and that makes us more broken, open for those who suffer. So I'm really proud of how strong we are and how we come together to support, um, in community and in uh, relationship and in, in just like, um, in like a sisterly, um, like we can be forces as communities together. So I'm just really proud of the strength we have, um, maybe even in our brokenness. So I like that. Yeah. I want to add that to mine. Oh, okay. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Well, this has been such a blessing yes. to me. So I can only, you know, imagine how For it'll sure. bless other people. Um, I want to thank Lorenz and Sean for giving us kind of a platform to, to explore the beautiful things that God has done in our bodies and hearts as women. And also for your friendships, uh, which are already blessing my life. And I know there's much more to come. Are there any last things that you guys would like to share? Oh gosh, I feel like we covered a lot. I know. Um, yeah. I did. I'm just Sex, so modesty. Good. I mean, we'll have to do this again. I now know. Got the brief, first, and the this first is without one. any drinks in us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None of us are drinking anything. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I want to thank you all for downloading today's episode. We hope you took something away or a whole lot from our discussion. Remember to subscribe to the show on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Connect with us on social media, on Instagram at Just a Parishioner, Facebook.com slash Just a Parishioner, or on our website, justaparishioner.com. Please pray for us and we will be praying for you. God bless. I'm carrying up myself.